you've given a very compelling argument for how this style of real estate investment really makes a lot of sense. Who shouldn't do this? Who's the person that you, know, you, don't, you want oh, to avoid this? <laughs> that's because it is not for everybody. Right. So I'm glad you actually asked that. Um, if you are the kind of investor that doesn't want to open their statement on their 401k because they you, you don't want to see if it's good and you don't want to see if it's bad, you just want it to be, Right. you should never own real estate. Um, because, you, I, 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 you know, people say passive income, and then that triggers something in people's mind that says, I have to do nothing. But you got a management company out there, but you do have to communicate with them. Right. I mean, they're going to... They're going to make sure that the work gets done. You don't have to fly there. You don't have to do any of that stuff. But they do need your authority. You have to give them the authority to actually make the repairs. Right. You have to communicate them about, look, my property's been vacant for 30 days. Should we lower the rent a little bit? Should we offer an incentive? Mm -hmm. Like, what can we do? Because they're going to kind of stick with what you told them. Mm -hmm. You got to be a little bit present. You got to be a little bit involved in your investment. You have to open up the bank account every month and go, okay, I have 10 units. Let's see if all 10 of them came in this month. And if they didn't, what's my next logical step? I'm going to call the management company and say, why didn't the money come in? And what are we doing about it? And there are some people, I don't understand why, but there are some people who just don't. So passive income doesn't mean mindless income. Exactly. Yeah. That's correct. They have to pay some I'm going to steal that, and I'm going to use it in every presentation I do. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Uh, so the management companies collect your rents also? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, so it's not just maintenance management, but they're, they're collecting the rent. They're, are they renting the property, too? They're showing absolutely. the place? Absolutely. And all that for 8 or 10%, huh? Wow. Yeah, now it doesn't now, seem like now, a very big number, I'm does seeing, it? Now it seems like a good number. Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and their margins are so slim, and they just get beat up. I, I already said that, but, I mean, you, people don't understand how bad they get beat up for such a small amount of money, which is why I don't do that business right, anymore. Right. Um, but, yeah, they, they collect the rent. They take all of the phone calls. They produce reports. At the end of the year, they produce reports so that you can give them to your accountant right. so your accountant can prepare your taxes. They, they do so much far and away uh, above what people think they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for $1,000, they're getting 100 They're getting $100 a month to take all of that abuse from everybody and then make sure that the property is, is make sure that your investment that's yours, that you 100% of, yeah. is working correctly. Wow. It's it's a small fee, and, and we get we get them reduced because of volume. Mm -hmm. But even if you had to pay ten percent, which is pretty much retail, right? It's not a bad deal. Not at all. I've got some decades of business experience. I've been around, uh, you know, varying forms of investments, investment advisors, what they recommend, et cetera. Um, everything you're talking about makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, I mean, it really sure. seems like it's it's a very a solid place for someone who can produce enough to have some excess capital or has saved some excess capital, maybe even inherited some excess capital, to say that this is really a, 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 a great common sense approach towards how to put it to work for you and how to build on that uh, that capital and turn it into a nest egg or, or security uh, sure. retirement. But I don't see this taught anywhere. Uh, I don't, you know, it, this is not common practice, common knowledge, at least in my view, and I see a lot of things. So why do you think that is? You know, I'm not sure why there's not a whole lot more financial education actually taught at a very, very young age, mm -hmm. um, because it's it's a critical piece to living uh, to living a life that's not enslaved. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what makes the company's money is not teaching financial literacy. It's teaching why you should have the the greatest you know credit card in the world that produces all these awesome rewards. Oh except for the fact that they're the ones that are getting the compounded interest and not you. So it is taught to some people somewhere because the banks know it. Wealthy people know it. I mean, the, the, the really wealthy families know. They, that's why they have, you know, uh, the, the, the family offices that are out there, mm -hmm. they buy multifamily properties. They, they buy real estate, mm -hmm. and they do it because... They understand all of the benefits of it. 
Um, and they teach their kids to do that. And the people that hang around them know that. You got to ask yourself, like, we're, we're, t- we're constantly talking about taxes and the, the super rich getting over on taxes, right? Why doesn't that ever get fixed? Mm-hmm. It's the same question. The people who are making the laws, they themselves benefit from the tax. They wrote the tax laws to benefit themselves. Right. Right.